what's the point? What do you think, Thanos? I don't think there is a point. So this guy wants to know, what is the purpose of life? You go to work, you know, you, you go through your daily routine. Yeah. You wake up the next day to do it again. Days turn into weeks, weeks turn into months, months turn into years. And you might see some decades, right? Yeah. But when it's, all, when it's all said and done, you're going to kick the bucket. And this world's going to keep spinning. You might have some retirement and some grandkids. But really, what's the point? What do you think, Thanos? I don't think there is a point. The point of life is to live. Life is uh, now is uh, what you make of it every day. There is no point in life. You just die. Like you do all these things and then you just die. And I believe that the designers, God, the artists, and you know, up there, if you will, uh, intended for us to have utopic conditions. Point of life is to reproduce and die. No point of life, no huh? Point at all. Well, that's kind of depressing, isn't it? <laughs> well, you get to choose if you want to be by depressed by it or not. <laughs> How will you know if you fulfilled your purpose? <laughs> Damn, that's a hard question. <laughs> How do you know that you'll fulfill that purpose? You really can't tell if you fulfilled that purpose or not. Yeah, I guess if I die with a smile. So do you think there's any accountability in the afterlife? Um, not necessarily. Yeah, I think, I think there's accountability because every action has a complete actual reaction anyway. No. So you, do you believe in God or heaven or hell, anything like that? Not really. So what do you think happens when you die? You decompose. Okay, so there's no spiritual life. You're not a spiritual person by any means? Not, not in terms of an afterlife thing. I respect people's belief in the spirits. I support their belief even. Uh, but I personally don't believe in it. And that's why you say there's probably no point of life is, you know, no. because there's nothing out there after the fact, right? No, I don't believe so. What happens after you die? Um, I wish I knew, man. I wish I knew. So after you die, you go to the cemetery. Six feet down. That's it, brother. That's it. So you believe in God and things like that? Yes. Okay, so you don't believe in like a God or no, heaven? Like, you do believe in God. My family is Catholic. Okay. So, so yeah. Yes, I do believe in God, sir. Okay. How do, how do you get to heaven if there's a heaven? Okay, well, how, how do you get to heaven? How do you think? Well, obviously, you like practice your religion a lot, and you do good things, not bad things. Bad things are really bad. Do good. You know, like, don't kill, don't do anything bad you're not supposed to do, and then okay. that's it. I personally... Hmm. How would I suggest? I mean, that's just a good... Yeah, how will I say it? So would I have to be a good person to get to heaven? Well, obviously, because why would bad people go to heaven? It makes no sense. So do you consider yourself to be a good person? Oh yeah, I'll give my last to anybody. Yes. As of right now, yeah. I think I'm pretty decent, yeah. I can be. Overall, I consider myself to be a good person. I try to be. Well, there's only one way you can really know that you're good. Do you know what that is? No, what is it? <laughs> okay. Uh, have you heard of uh, the Ten Commandments? Oh, yeah. 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 Have you ever told a lie? I have. Yeah, so everybody lies, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Obviously. When I was a child, yes. Yes. Okay. I have. Okay, how many lies do you think you've told in your life? A lot. Okay, so what do they call people who tell over a thousand lies? I mean, <laughs> A liar. Liars? Well, you would say he's a liar. A liar. <laughs> a liar. A liar? Okay. <laughs> have you, <laughs> Theo, so have you ever stolen anything regardless of the value? When I was little, yes. Probably when I was little, yeah. When I was a little girl. Okay, how about you? Yes, I did when I was younger. Okay. Yes. Mm, I probably have. Okay, so what do they call people who steal things? A criminal. <laughs> a stealer? Thieves. 
A thief? Um, a robber? Thief. Is it a thief, would you say? Oh, yeah. Thief. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I broke a lot. <laughs> okay, have you ever used God's name in vain? I have. I try not to, and I know that's one of the commandments. Oh, yeah, because I'm not, like, really super religious, so I guess you could say it. Yes. That's like taking the name of the God that gave you life and using it as a four-letter word to express disgust. Yeah. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 that if you look at a woman with lust, then you've already committed adultery with her already in your heart. You ever looked at a woman with lust before? Oh, definitely. Yes. I had my second child. I'm still married. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yes. Have you ever looked with lust? Yes. Okay, how about you? Of course, yeah. Okay, so by your own admission, okay, and I'm not judging you because oh, yeah. I'm guilty of the same thing. You're a lying thief and an adulterer at heart. You got to stand before a holy God on Judgment Day. Will you be innocent or guilty, do you think? In his eyes, guilty. I believe that I would be guilty. I'll be guilty for things. No, I would be, I would be uh, guilty. In that race, I'll probably be guilty of that, yes. How about you? To be honest, guilty. Okay. And if you, if, the big if, if there was a God, you'd have to stand before him and he would judge you according to those laws. Would you be innocent or guilty? Um, that's a big if, right? Yeah, that's a big if. If such, if, if uh, that day were to come, I'd be judged. I think that I've, I've, uh, do everything I can to, uh, to not live that way. Those are mistakes that I've made in the past. And I try my best every single day to not do anything like that. And I believe that that would save me in such, an, in such a situation where okay. to arise. Okay. You know, try this in a court of law. You're, someone's guilty of, of, of stealing 20 cars, right? And then they stand before the judge, they're guilty, and they say, Judge, you know, I'm sorry, you'll just let me go because you're a good guy. What do you, how do you think that'll work? doesn't work like that. No, and so much, how much more is God holy and will hold us accountable? Try that in the court of law. Okay. Okay, you're guilty of stealing trucks, all right? You stole 50 trucks. But I didn't. Well, this is hypothetical, okay? And you stand before the judge and you say, Judge, I think you're a good person and I'm sorry. I'll never do it again. You think that guy will let you go? Probably not. Probably not. What Justice is going to have to take place, right? And in the same way, you would hope that God would let you go, but the reality is, is he has to hold you accountable. Yeah. All right? So if he holds you accountable, would you go to heaven or hell based on what we're talking about? Interesting question, huh? It's an interesting one. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I can't tell you. Well, it, you know, if you look at the... With the stumped me. Yeah, yeah. Would that be heaven or hell, do you think? I'd be in the middle. What does that mean, in the middle? <laughs> you pray that I go to heaven and I go to hell. Well, here, here, I'm just going to, here's the sentence for lying. This is just one scripture. It says, Revelation 21.8 says, Every liar will have their part in the lake of fire. Now, I've lied too, so that means that you and I are both in a whole world of hurt, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, does that concern you, that if you were to die in the next minute, <laughs> you know, that God would see you that way and you'd end up in hell? Yes. Hell. Hell. Now, does that concern you at all? Yeah, of course. Yeah. How about you? Yes, it does. Do you know what God did for you so that you wouldn't have to go to hell? No. Do you know what God did for you so that you wouldn't have to go to hell? Um, yes. He, he sent his son, Jesus, to, to die for my sins. So it's like this. You broke God's law, so did I, but Jesus paid your fine. The legal implication of that is because you're a guilty criminal, there had to be a debt to be paid. But God loved you so much, Danielle, that he stepped out of heaven, became obedient to death, even death on a cross, and he did that for you. Right. Check this out. Jesus said that if your eyes cause you to sin, it's better to gouge them out than to surrender your whole body to the fire. Now, he wasn't playing around. Why do you think he went to the cross? Because hell is very real, but he loved you, Quana, enough and he demonstrated that love for you in this, that while you're a sinner, Christ died. While you've broken those laws, that's what sin means, Christ died for you. So if you put your trust in him, you know, 
you can be saved from the consequence of your crimes against God. Does that make sense? Yes. So 2,000 years ago, God came in the form of a man, Jesus Christ, and he lived a life on earth sinless, and he gave himself for you. You broke God's law, and Jesus paid your fine. Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and God raised him from the dead. And if all you have to do to be saved from justice, from going to hell, is believe what Jesus did on the cross for you, and that God raised him from the dead, and all you have to do is put your faith in that and trust in that, and then say thank you, and I'm gonna start living for him. I'm not gonna steal anymore. I'm not gonna lie anymore. I'm not gonna go in a closed room and look at pornography because I want to honor God because of what he did for me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this. If, if you were in court and you owed a $50,000 fine for selling drugs, okay, and you don't have the money, do you have the money to pay your fine? No. Okay, so the judge asks you, Quan, do you have the money? No, you don't, right? So as your bailiff, take her away. So as you're being let out of the courtroom, someone that you don't even know stands up and says, wait a second, judge, I've got $50,000 that I want to pay on her behalf. She doesn't know me, but I care about her. Judge looks at you, Quanta, your fine's been paid, you're free to go. Now, how would you feel towards that person that paid that fine for you? Grateful. Yeah. There's a lot of, like, I guess when you're in a moment like that, you don't really know how to describe it, but grateful is one of those ones that. Yeah, so let me ask you this. If that person was close to you and they sold everything that they owned to get you off the hook, now would you go do the things that caused you to get in that predicament again? No. No, and that's, and that's what living for the Lord is. You know, we're grateful for what he did. Now, how would you feel towards that person that paid that fine for you? I appreciate that person. I would. Very grateful. Grateful. And that's what Jesus did for you. He, the penalty, the crimes that you've committed, he paid for. Yeah. Okay? All right, we're asking about the point of life. Jesus said the point of life, basically, this is eternal life, that they will know the one true God, and Jesus Christ, who he's, who he's sent. Okay, that's John 17. You know, you can just read that. But that's life, to know him and to walk with him and to, to understand that when you live for him, guess what? You will find out your purpose. And that's what God wants for you, Danielle, is for you to find out who you are in him. Because he's got great things in store for you. But does that make sense what we're talking about? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. It does. I don't believe it was a random thing. I mean, it is kind of random, but I believe it's divine, an appointment for us to have this conversation. I know you like, he know I'm going through stuff, so he probably sent you here to talk to me. Yeah. Well, he loves you so much. From what's my purpose? Like, why he made me me? Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, it's in him. You know, Jesus said, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these, you've heard that verse, huh? And all these things will be added unto you. And I'm telling you, Jesus also said that if you lose your life for my sake, you'll find it. You know, if you try to find your life without him, you know, you're going to be you're gonna be searching for a long time. But your identity's in him. Colossians says that all things were made for him and by him. That includes you, Danielle. You were made for him, by him, for his pleasure. All right, so the point of life is this to know God and to make him known. All the other stuff is meaningless. It doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, you can go be a career really fulfilled, go do something like that. But at the end of the day, your bank account won't matter, right? How many how many U-Hauls uh, have you seen behind a hearse? <laughs> None. <laughs> you can't take any of it with you, can you? No. And the point of life is this, to know God. Jesus said, he said when he was praying in the garden, he said, this is eternal life, that they might know the one true God in Jesus Christ, his son, whom he sent. If you believe in that, it's eternal life. To know him and to make him known, you know, to go and share the goodness. See, the good news is, or the bad news is, is that you broke God's law and you deserve punishment. But the good news is, is that he demonstrated his love for you, that while you're a sinner, while you've broken God's law, Jesus paid your fine. All right, well, tell your pastor that some crazy white dude came and talked to you on the street and, uh, you know, and, and it, just to let you know that God loves you and it was no act, you're, you're not an accident. You are made with purpose and it's in Him, okay? Can I pray with you? Yeah. Is that okay? I'm just going to turn this off. So when are you going to put your trust in Jesus once and for all? Today. Today? Like right, like right now? Yeah. Awesome. Well, can I pray with you? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, bless you. We can turn the, you can, I'm going to keep turning. Right. Father God, I just thank you, Father. So when are you going to put your trust in Jesus, man? 
today. Well, that's a big deal, man. All right, well, that's awesome. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna pray with you. Is that cool? Can I do that? Sure. All right, sweet, man. So, how do you get to heaven? Well, you just say you gotta have hope. In who? In Jesus. In Jesus, God. once for all, right? Yes, sir. So, when are you gonna put your trust in Him once and for all? No. Right now? Yes, sir. Right now, you feel the same? Right now. All right, you guys, you guys, can I pray with you about that? Is that cool? All right, let's just pray. I'm going to put my hand right here, man, okay? Father, I thank you for these two young men, Lord. So we were all created for a purpose. We have a God who loves us. And then he sent his son. Fuck, no, no, I'll let take the mic, bro. Let her, let her speak. Okay. He sent his son to die for us because he's holy, right? And he gave us free will. He gave us choice. Okay. And then we, like... We screwed up, but he loves us. He's like, okay, I'm holy. Like you're flaw. Like we just because his presence is so holy, right? Sure. Like we can't. He just can't be with it. It's not that he hates us. Yeah. But he's like, here, I'm gonna send you my son because I love you, and that's gonna be the sacrifice. Like the cross, like my blood. I see you. I love you through him. And then our purpose is to live out his love, his truth and to free people from like the bondage of not knowing what hope and true life is because we get to live for eternity like with God, with our Father in heaven. I mean, is that incredible? Yeah. Like we get to live together as a family and it's like free from all of this. It's so much greater. Yeah.